Welcome again. Today we will discuss four oxidizing agent: tetra enpropyl uh, ammonia pyruvate, which is TPAP, then desmartin pyridine (DMP), and open heart oxidation. And fourth one is sodium pyridate. So TPAP, which is tetra enpropyl ammonium pyruvate, which is also called Le Griffith reagent, and it, as you can see the structure, there is tetra enpropyl ammonium salt is there. And ruthenium, this is ruthenium uh, plus seven state. So this is pyruvate, and this is uh, can be used in stoichiometric or catalytic with N-methyl morpholine oxide. And generally, this uh, converts to the uh, primary or secondary alcohol to the carbonyl compound. Also, it can convert alcohol to the carboxylic acid. And when H2 is present, that that time it can convert to carboxylic acid. It has several advantages, like it is a mild oxidant. Its bulk allows selective reactions. It can be used in catalytic quantities. Good functional group tolerance. Also, ruthenium tetroxide is a highly aggressive oxidant, but its one electron reduced derivative, that is this one, is mild oxidizing agent for the conversion of alcohols to aldehydes. That is the motive to generate this pyruvate species. And no epiphanization of alpha chiral centers or double bond isomerization happen during oxidation. Also, no competitive beta elimination. So this is the general mechanism that alcohol first attack to the ruthenium and then this um, ruthenate ester is generated. After that, this O minus attacks this acidic hydrogen of the alcohol and then the carbonyl compound is generated after elimination of water and ruthenium seven becoming ruthenium five here. And then water can attack take this proton and it makes the uh, ruthenium uh, this species O minus. And now morpho NMO, NMO. So this is called NMO or NMO, N-methyl morpholine oxide, which reoxidizes this one, and then ruthenate is generated again. So how it does now? This O minus attacks to ruthenium again, and now this species is formed, which after elimination of morpholine. As you can see, morpholine, N-methyl morpholine is uh, liberating here, and you get this ruthenate species. That's the use of N-methyl morpholine oxide that it can regenerate the ruthenate species, and this is the ruthenate ester that is the intermediate. So, its main application is oxidation of primary alcohol. Like you can see here, is a primary alcohol is there, OTBS group is there, NCBJ group is there, and uh, selectively this alcohol is getting oxidized to aldehyde with NMO, TPAP, four angstrom molecular shift, dichloromethane in room temperature condition, and these two groups are uh, not touched during the condition. Also here the double bond is present and similarly NCBZ group is there. Here also the primary alcohol oxidizes to the aldehyde. And this is a complex molecule. As you can see, there is a THP which is acid sensitive group and alcohol is there and also double bond um, present are there. So in this TPAP NMO condition, selectively this alcohol is getting converted to the aldehyde without disturbing the THP group. That means TPAP is a very mild oxidant. It cannot harm the acid sensitive group. Also, direct oxidation of primary alcohol to carboxylic acid is possible, and first the alcohol is getting oxidized to the aldehyde, and then water attacks to the aldehyde, so stabilize aldehyde hydrate, and this stabilization happens with a Lewis base that is the NMO. So NMO acting as a Lewis base that is stabilizing the aldehyde hydrate, and aldehyde hydrate ultimately going to carboxylic acid. And here you can see one molecule of N-methyl morpholine oxide. Binding to the aldehyde hydrate here, two hydrogen bonded are there with one O minus, and here two NMO group is there, so each one is binding to it one OH group. So this hydrogen bonding stability is very important to stabilize the aldehyde hydrate, which ultimately going to carboxylic acid. So this is the mechanism. Again, we can see that first the alcohol attacks to the ruthenate. To generate this ruthenate ester, and then after elimination of OH minus, this species is formed. And now this ruthenium oxygen bond can take this proton here, and the ruthenium O3, RuO3 minus is liberated, and the aldehyde is generated. And then the aldehyde 
in presence of water makes this aldehyde hydrate which stabilized by the NMO as we have seen either one or two molecule of NMO can stabilize the aldehyde hydrate and again ruthenate reacts with this aldehyde hydrate to generate this ester ruthenate ester which similarly like this intermediate like A this eliminates the water or OH minus RuO3 you get the carboxylic acid. And there are different primary alcohols can be oxidized directly to the carboxylic acid with this condition. Here you can see a long chain al alcohol, primary alcohol can be oxidized to the aldehyde acid with 0.1 equivalent TPAP, 10 equivalent NMO plus water, acetonitride solvent room temperature it gives 94 percent yield of this product. Also this long chain alcohol with a double bond can be oxidized to the carboxylic acid with 0.1 equivalent TPAP, 10 equivalent NMO, water, acetonitrile condition, 89 percent yield it gives the product. Also there can be an epoxide in the alcohol and you can see this a long chain alcohol with an epoxide is converted to the carboxylic acid without disturbing the epoxide group. So epoxide group is untouched during this oxidation. Also a benzyl group is present here, benzyl and primary alcohol, so under this TPAP NMO condition you get the carboxylic acid in good yield and benzyl group is undisturbed in this condition. Also this oxidation has been used in many natural product synthesis, here you can see a complex structure, there are many groups are there like here and epoxide is there, here is a ketal group is there, here and ester motif is there and when this oxidation happens with the uh, TPAP, here we can see that only a secondary alcohol which is sterically less hindered. Here two OH is present, but this OH is sterically hindered because of it, both side methyl group is there. So this is sterically accessible, this is uh, sterically less hindered and that is why selectively this alcohol only go to going to carbonyl and also other groups are not disturbed during this oxidation. Here also a complex molecule is present, here you can see there is a, a acetal motif, there is a ketal motif, there is an epoxide. So all these groups are remain intact when, uh, when this primary alcohol getting oxidized to the aldehyde with TPAP, NMO, DCM, 4 angstrom molecular shift condition and it gives good yield, very good yield of this product. Also selectivity for primary hydroxyl group allows lactone formation. So here you can see there is a tertiary alcohol is present and primary alcohol present when TPAP, NMO, DCM is used for angstrom molecular shape you get selectively the aldehyde and after that aldehyde the lactone is formed that which attacks to the tertiary alcohol attacks to aldehyde to get the lactol which finally goes to the lactone with TPAP. Here secondary alcohol also oxidize but much more slowly like this uh, alcohol with an heterocyclic motif, pyrrole motif, it oxidize to the ketone with TPAP, NMO, DCM, 4 angstrom molecular shift condition and it gives 73 percent yield. Also long reaction time is required. Here is an uh, complex um, molecule and that is what we discussed last slide that depending on sterics can get selectivity for least hindered hydroxy group. Here is another example, here you can see there are two secondary alcohol present, this tertiary alcohol cannot be oxidized. So among these two secondary alcohols, this alcohol is cis with the methyl group and this alcohol is trans, so this is trans and this is cis. So, this alcohol is sterically more hindered and this is sterically less hindered. As this alcohol is sterically less hindered when TPAP, NMO, 4 angstrom molecular shift is used then selectively this alcohol only getting oxidized to this ketone with 61 percent yield. So, this tells that the steric is very important because the alcohol first attacks to the ruthenium center. So, the if the alcohol is sterically hindered then it cannot attack to the ruthenium and that is why the selectivity is coming. Here is an another example that lactol can be oxidized selectively. Again here sterics is operating, so here you can see there is a alcohol present is there and there is a lactol present. So when TPAP NMO is used selectively this alcohol, this lactol is getting oxidized to the lactone without disturbing the secondary alcohol. So because secondary alcohol also uh, cease with this oxygen, 
ether bond. So, the, this alcohol is sterically more hindered position that is why TPAP can oxidize less hindered lactal motive to the lactone. Lac TPAP can also oxidize sulfur, but not other heter atoms like this thioether. Thioether can be oxidized to the sulfoxide with TPAP NMO 4 angstrom molecular sieve condition and it can give 80 percent yield of the sulfoxide. Also, sequential reaction is possible like here chiral center is present with the alcohol. So, under this condition there is a possibility that aldehyde alpha position can epimerize and you get racemization, but here with TPAP NMO condition you can get the aldehyde and in situ if you trap with this honor hutig elide then the alpha beta unsaturated ester is possible and this chiral center is retained. So, that means TPAP is very mild it does not when in the aldehyde condition it does not allow epimerization of the methyl group and that is why you get the methyl geometry is retained in the alpha beta unsaturated ester. Cleavage of 1 to dials is possible also with TPAP we have seen like earlier dial cleavage, but here TPAP can also do with sodium chloride NOCl sodium hypochlorite it gives 93 percent yield of this aldehyde. So, this is a symmetrical dial if it cleaves then it gives only this product two molecules of this product. Also retroaldol reaction is possible. So, here you can see there is a tertiary alcohol present and this is a secondary alcohol. So, with TPAP NMO the secondary alcohol gets oxidized. Now, this is a beta hydroxy ketone, this is a beta hydroxy ketone, this is a hydroxy, this is ketone. So, this is the aldol product. Now, the retroaldol possible that OH becomes a ketone here and you get here aldol donor. So, this becomes aldol acceptor and you get here this. So, these two uh, reactant on aldol reaction can give this product. So, here under this condition retroaldol reaction happens and you get these two reactants. Now, we will discuss desmartin pyridine and this is hypervalent iodine 5 reagent and this is uh, named after the American chemist Daniel Benjamin Des and James Cullen Martin who developed the reagent in 1983. This oxidizes primary alcohol to aldehydes and secondary alcohols to ketones. Advantage of desmartin pyridine, it is mild reaction condition generally used, avoids the use of toxic chromium reagents. So, this is hypervalent iodine, this is much more less toxic, does not require large excess of co-oxidants like we have seen in TPAP you need the N-methyl morphine oxide, but desmartin pyridine itself can oxidize alcohol to aldehyde. High chemoselectivity is possible. Tolerance of sensitive functional group uh, reaction posits are room temperature. So, preparation of desmartin pyridine we will see first. Desmartin pyridine is prepared by uh, treating 2 iodo benzoic acid with KBRO3 followed by acetylation. Firstly, 2 iodo benzoic acid is oxidized with KBRO3 in 0.73 molar H2SO4 and it gives the iodoxy benzoic acid which is IBX. Here you can see iodine is plus 5. And then the hydroxy indent, so this is all can be also called hydroxy indent is treated with a mixture of acetic anhydride and acetic acid at 85 degree centigrade, it gives the desmartin pyridine. So, what happens? One uh, acetate group attacks here and this OH gets protected. So, ultimately after that also uh, the, uh, after attacking this o oxygen also takes another acetate molecule. So, here try acetate molecule is there and here also iodine is plus 5. So, what is the difference between I, IBX and DMP? Because if you convert this to acetate this becomes very mild. So, desmartin pyridine is very mild oxidizing agent compared to IBX that is why it reagent was developed. Also, there is another procedure for this desmartin pyridine which has improved synthesis instead of potassium bromate you can use oxon water 70 degree centigrade you can generate the IBX and instead of acetic acid you can use catalytic paratoline sulfonic acid with acetic anhydride 80 degree centigrade you can get desmartin pyridine. So, what is the general reaction this is the alcohol to aldehyde oxidation and what is the mechanism? 
The mechanism is that one equivalent of desmartin pyrogenate reacts with one equivalent of alcohol. First, a substitution reaction happens. So, acetate groups liberate it and oxygen bo makes a bond with the iodine. And after that, this proton liberated by the acetate, ultimately it becoming acetic acid. And now, that acetate again or this acetate can deprotonate this hydrogen which is acidic enough after binding to the iodine and now this gets liberated and ultimately uh, this bond will I oxygen bond will cleave and again another acetate will liberate and ultimately you get this. So, iodine 5 becomes iodine 3 I there only one acetate molecule will be remain. So, here 3 acetate group was there and ultimately this product it becomes 1 acetate. So, 2 acetate liberated and in that process the alcohol became oxidized to the aldehyde and desmartin pyridine reduced to this one. So, this is the reduced species of desmartin pyridine. And 2 acetate molecules on liberates generates 2 molecule of acetic acid. So, 2 molecules of acetic acid this and this you will get when you do the reaction of alcohol with desmartin pyridine. So, the, as we told earlier that this is a mild oxidizing agent and you can see this molecule there is a dienone moiety and also an epoxide is there and under this condition selectively the alcohol is oxidized to the aldehyde and other motifs remain undisturbed. This is an oxidation cascade reaction. So, this is desmartin pyridine and oxidize this diol to the dihaldehyde and then uh, this 8 membered cycle is formed. So, this is called retrochlasian rearrangement. So, with retrochlasian rearrangement you can get the ring expansion of 3 or more atoms and you get this heterocycle in 92 percent yield. Also, if you have allylic alcohol as well as a triple bond selectively this alcohol is oxidized with desmartin pyridine to generate the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. Also secondary alcohol can be also be oxidized to the carbonyl group. Here you can see there is a piperidine motif and during this oxidation the piperidine motif untouched and only the secondary alcohol gets to the carbonyl. Also here a cycle propyl group is there and this is a quaternary center this primary alcohol selectively getting oxidized to the aldehyde without disturbing the quaternary chiral center and this is very mild dcm 0 degree centigrade to room temperature only 90 minutes you can get very high yield of this product. This is another substrate where a secondary alcohol is present there is an amide is present and this is thioether is present. So, under this condition desmartin pyridine and desmartin room temperature only is secondary alcohol is getting oxidized to the ketone and other groups are not touched during this oxidation. Also from thioamides this is thioamides on reaction with desmartin pyridine it can give the benzothiazole. So, this benzothiazole compounds are formed. So, what is the mechanism? Now, first desmartin oxid uh, desmartin pyridine oxidize, there is a negative charge will form and that will be oxidized single electron oxidant, it gives a radical, and then the aryl species reacts to the radical and then radical migrated to the aryl group now. And after oxidation of this radical, aryl radical you get the benzene ring here and ultimately benzothiazole is formed. Desmartin pyridine can also oxidize secondary alcohol with other groups like here n bog group. This is n bog group is present and this is which is acid sensitive and this one a amide group is present and with desmartin pyridine in same room temperature 3 hours you get good yield of this product and the geometry is retained here. So, this alpha amide alpha amide geometry is not disturbed during this oxidation. Here also you can see a heterocycle is present and also two fluorine group is there and only secondary alcohol selectively getting oxidized to the ketone without disturbing the other groups. This is a complex molecule and desmartin pyridine like TPAP also is used many uh, natural product synthesis. Here you can see there are two tetrahydropyridine species are there and 
Also, many chiral centers are present, and this is an allylic alcohols. This allylic alcohol selective getting oxidized to the aldehyde, and also many acyl ether groups are present, like TS group, TBS group. So, these groups are not disturbed on this oxidation. So, desmartin pyridine is very mild, and you have to use pyridine because desmartin pyridine is slightly acidic. So, sometimes you have to use base like base like pyridine sodium bicarbonate you can use with desmartin pyridine and to make the solution neutral. This is a complex molecule here tetrahydropyranamide is there and different uh, other groups like ester motif is there TBS group is present. So, with this condition only the secondary alcohol gets to the ketone enone actually here allylic alcohol. So, other groups are not disturbed during this oxidation. Now, we will discuss uh, open our oxidation. This oxidation named after Rupert Victor Oppenauer and the reaction is the opposite of miruin pond of Halle reduction. This is generally oxidation of secondary alcohol to ketone in the presence of acetone or other ketones also aldehydes can be used. Secondary alcohols in general are oxidized much faster than primary alcohols. Acetone acts as a hydrogen acceptor and excess of acetone drives the reaction in forward direction. Reaction generally done in benzene acetone mixture and this is the reaction that the alcohol is there secondary alcohol and acetone this is the acetone is the hydride acceptor actually that we will see in the mechanism that this hydrogen actually going as a hydride. So, this is special of open air oxidation. So, the hydride goes to the acetone and acetone becomes alcohol and this alcohol becomes ketone. What is the mechanism? So, first the alcohol attacks to aluminum triisopropoxide and liberates one molecule of isopropoxide anion and now this acidic proton is taken by the isopropoxide anion to generate the isopropanol and this O allyl bond with this intermediate is formed now. And now this intermediate again this aluminum can bind with the kit acetone or other ketone and when it binds then what happens this binding helps the electrophilicity of the acetone mighty will enhance. And now aluminum is binding with this oxygen, oxygen alcohol that is the alcohol through the aluminum oxygen bond and also binding with the acetone. So, this is the acetone this is also binding with the aluminum and now it can stay in a 6 member chair like transition state and now the hydride delivery will take place. So, the you can see this way the O aluminum bond is breaking and it is migrating to carbon oxygen bond here the double bond is generating and hydride is going to the acetone and it is becoming alcohol. So, here intramolecular hydride delivery. So, this is special about open air oxidation all other oxidation we have seen that this hydrogen is going as a H plus, but in open air oxidation this is going as a hydride and this hydride is going to the acetone ultimately this is going to oxidize to the ketone and this acetone becomes O allyl species now intermediate and on hydrolysis this will give isopropanol. So, acetone becoming isopropanol and your alcohol is becoming to the carbonyl compound. There are different modification of open air oxidation uh, is reported like O H sign open air oxidation under this oxidation parabenzoquinone is used instead of acetone. So, this is the hydride acceptor parabenzoquinone and when it was treated with this uh, secondary alcohol with a double bond far, but what happened this gets oxidized to the carbonyl compound with this aluminum isopropoxide parabenzoquinone toluene and now this becomes enolate and this enolate binds with this aluminum and parabenzoquinone ultimately it becomes dienone. So, what happens ketone is becoming enolate and that enolate is binding with the aluminum and again it is getting oxidized and you get a actually this 
uh, hydrogen is moving and ultimately you get a oxidation. So, ultimately you get dienone with a double bond new double bond generation. Hydroxysterols are oxidized to ketosterols with benzoquinone as the hydrogen acceptor. Another modification by Woodward, this is called Woodward modification, he used potassium tertiary or butoxide base. So, instead of aluminum isopropoxide, Woodward used potassium tertiary butoxide and also benzophenone uh, like last case benzophenone is the hydride acceptor. Instead of aluminum alpoxide, potassium tertiary butoxide is used and also known as open or Woodward modification. This is third modification. In this modification, highly active aluminum catalyst. So, instead of aluminum isopropoxide, this is a catalyst, highly reactive aluminum catalyst is used, which was reported by Maruka and co-workers. Only one mole percent um, catalyst is enough to do the oxidation. And uh, this uh, tertiary butyl uh, aldehyde, which is called pival aldehyde. So, pival aldehyde is the hydride acceptor. So, that means not only ketone, aldehyde can also act as a hydride acceptor and now this alcohol is getting to the carbon. So, carbon is generated from oxidation of this hydrocarbon. In this modification, trimethyl aluminum is used as a catalyst and 4 nitrobenzaldehyde is used as an oxidant. So, here 4 nitrobenzaldehyde is a oxidant or hydride acceptor and uh, under this condition with aluminum trimethyl aluminum 10 mole percent this alcohol is getting oxidized to the ketone. So, this will be hydrogen. So, this secondary alcohol is getting oxidized to the carbonyl compound. So, we have seen the migration of the double bond uh, or dienone generation and here gamma bonds migrates, migrates in conjugation with the carbonyl group. So, here what happened? gamma bond that migrates to the uh, uh, alpha beta position of the carbonyl group here cyclohexanone acts as a hydrogen acceptor. So, when this steroid or cholesterol compound is oxidized with aluminum trioxypropoxide and cyclohexanone as the oxidant, cyclohexanone becomes cyclohexanone, hexanol and you becomes uh, first the carbonyl group is formed and then isomerization happens. So, alpha beta unsaturated ketone is generated. So, that means double bond isomerization is happening here. This is an example of opener oxidation and this is a compound called codeine and allylic secondary alcohol is present also with uh, heterocycle motive is present and with this condition only the allylic alcohol is getting oxidized with aluminum trioxypropoxide and cyclohexanone condition you get greater than 65 percent yield of this product. Also uh, we have seen this isomerization so this compound can also isomerize with PPH 3 whole 3 ruthenium chloride potassium carbonate and acetone is the uh, hydrogen hydride acceptor. So, acetone is the oxidant and uh, in this condition also double bond is migrating to the alpha beta position because this is the most stable. So, we have seen that steroids can isomerize to the alpha beta unsaturated enone with this opener oxidation condition. Here are more examples is there. This is Prezinolone here also try uh, isopropoxide aluminum with acetone it gives the progesterone and this is uh, here a secondary alcohol and primary alcohol is present. So, here uh, selectively the primary alcohol is getting oxidized because my, might be steric is a factor might be because they are uh, the, these two groups are close to each other and that is why the steric steric playing role. In general, we told that secondary alcohol is reactive than primary with opener oxidation, but here steric is playing role. So, primary alcohol is getting oxidized to the aldehyde, then this alcohol is making the lactol and lactol is making going to lactone. So, through lactol, through lactol, lactol will be first form and then it oxidized to the lactone. 
Now we will discuss another oxidizing agent which is sodium per iodate. So, here iodine is in plus 7 oxidation state. So, desmartin pyridine it was plus 5 here plus 7 oxidation state. NiO4 is an inorganic salt composed of sodium cation and power iodate anion. It breaks apart vicinal diols to form aldehydes and ketones. It exists in two different forms sodium meta power iodate, sodium ortho power iodate which is Na2H3IO6, oxidation of alcohol to aldehyde, oxidation of an alkyl arene oxidation of alkyl arenes and benzylic bromides in acidic medium, diols cleavage, sage bond functionalization in hydrocarbons, oxidative iodination of arenes, sulfonylation of aromatic compounds, oxidative functionalization of alkenes. So, sodium pyridate performs many reactions that we will discuss. First is the oxidation of alcohol to aldehydes. So, this is the mechanism in presence of acid the alcohol is getting protonated and now sodium pyridate reacts with this alcohol to generate this uh, iodoester and now this uh, alpha hydrogen will be eliminated and HIO3 will be generated and you get benzaldehyde as the product. Also oxidation of alkyl arene by sodium pyridate a meta pyridate with lithium bromide is possible. So, when sodium pyridate lithium bromide is treated followed by acetic acid methanol you get this benzylic acetate or benzylic ether. On the other hand if you treat with aqueous H2SO4 this intermediate the intermediate mostly is a bromide that intermediate you get carboxylic acid. So, what happened? This is the reaction that toluene uh, derivative can be oxidized to the carboxylic acid with sodium pyridate lithium bromide in acid condition like here H2SO4 is used. Also it has been observed that if benzylic bromides are used, benzylic bromides are also when you do not use lithium bromide here, lithium bromide is not used here and other two reagents keeping intact sodium pyridate and H plus and same condition it giving 89 percent yield of the carboxylic acid. So, this tail that converting to the toluene it is going to the benzylic bromide intermediate. So, toluene oxidation going via benzyl bromide intermediate when lithium bromide is used. So, what is the reaction equation no lithium bromide sodium pyridate in acid condition it is becoming bromine water I minus plus N A plus. So, this is the stoichiometry and now your toluene can react with bromine and generate the benzylic bromide and HBr. So, this is toluene C H 3 is getting activated under this condition to get a bromine compound a benzyl bromide. So, this is the overall reaction ARC CH3 plus 2 Br minus plus 1 by 4 NaIO4 plus 2 H plus it is giving ARCH to Br, ARCH to Br. ARCH to Br plus 1 by 4 I minus plus H2O plus HBr plus 1 by 4 Na plus. Now, this benzylic bromide can react with sodium pyridate. So, this is the intermediate. It can react with sodium pyridate 8H plus and 8 water. It becomes 8ARCH2H plus 4Br2 I minus plus H2 plus Na plus. So, benzyl bromide is converted to benzyl alcohol and now Br2 can generate Benzyl, Br2 can generate bromine radical and this alcohol benzylic alcohol reacts with bromine dot to generate a benzylic radical and HBr this radical reacts with bromine to generate the aldehyde and Br dot is regenerated and now the aldehyde is going to react with Br dot to generate the ketyl radical plus HBr and this ketyl radical reacts with bromine to generate the ARCO Br plus Br dot also 
and now finally arco br plus h2o arco2 h plus hbr so when toluene is going to the carboxylic acid it is going through many intermediates first the benzyl bromide is formed benzyl bromide goes to the benzyl alcohol benzyl alcohol goes to the benzaldehyde derivatives and benzaldehyde derivatives goes to arco br acyl bromide and now acyl bromides on hydrolysis giving the carboxylic acid dial cleavage sodium pyrrolidate main application is in the dial cleavage so dial binds to this baruthenate ion and like this intermediate is formed and which on cleaved as you can see this intermediate so earlier this was the paruthenate and now the dial um, interacts with this and generate this species and after cc bond cleavage like this way you generate two molecules of the aldehyde and iodine 7 becomes iodine 6 two oh so this is h2io4 so h2io4 is generated on oxidation so sodium pyrrolidate is converting sodium pyrrolidate is getting reduced to h2io4 and this uh, diol is converted to two molecules of aldehydes also this is uh, generally one pot procedure is followed from alkene so alkenes can be osmolated with osmium tetroxide to provide the diol and diol with sodium pyrrolidate reaction we generate the pyrrolidate ester like we have seen here and pyrrolidate ester on cleavage will give two molecules of aldehyde and h2io4 so this is very important reaction that alkene can be treated with osmium tetroxide and followed by sodium pyrrolidate that will give directly to aldehyde sodium pyrrolidate has also been used in ch bond functionalization in hydrocarbons like when cyclohexane is treated with sodium pyrrolidate ki sodium azide acetic acid condition it gives the iodocyclohexane in 99% yield on the other hand when sodium pyrrolidate parsimarylate same reaction but the temperature was increased to 45 degree centigrade then you get this compound iodo azide in 65 percent yield and at 75 degree centigrade you get the uh, o acetate iodo compound so what is going on so that means that on oxidation this first this uh, iodo cyclohexane is formed and on oxidation it generating the cyclohexene and potassium iodide as well as sodium azide on oxidation with sodium pyrrolidate generate this species ioac or in3 and this reacts with this double bond to make this iodo uh, azide or iodo acetate derivatives benzylic azides from toluene derivatives also possible so if you instead of cyclohexane if you use toluene derivative then with sodium pyrrolidate potassium iodide azide and acetic acid condition you get ch2n3 species in 85 to 95% yield also if benzylic derivatives are present and if you change the reaction condition to sodium pyrrolidate lithium bromide methanol acetic acid condition you can get mixture of product x is equal to br ome benzylic bromide or benzyl ether or acetate is formed in 87 to 60 percent yield and if you use cyclohexane like earlier with sodium pyrrolidate lithium bromide glacial acetic acid in 80 degree centigrade you can get the trans dibromide so trans 1 to dibromocyclohexane is form in 40 percent yield with sodium pyrrolidate lithium bromide glacial acetic acid condition also oxidative iodination of adenes is possible like this two nitro toluene two nitro aniline when reacted with sodium pyrrolidate potassium iodide sodium chloride with acetic acid water 9 is to 1 25 degree centigrade it gives 98 percent yield to the iodo derivative so para of nh2 form the iodo species and now Oh, deactivated arenes can also be uh, reacted with this species sodium pyrrolidate iodine 95% H2SO4 and meta so this is meta selectivity this is para selectivity because this is uh, electron deficient or arene so electron deficient arenes gives uh, meta selection and this is electron slightly electron rich uh, arene so this is para selective
Sulfonation of aromatic compounds is also possible with sodium pyridate like uh, this uh, benzene derivatives when reacted with sulfonyl chloride with sodium pyridate heating condition in 3 to 9 hours it gives the sulfoxide in 75 to 89 percent yield. Other oxidative uh, functionalization of alkenes is possible like this the type of alkenes can be aryl or alkyl substituted also CH2H, CH2OAC group and when sodium pyridate, potassium iodide, sodium azide, acetic acid is present under this condition this iodoazide is formed. So, this we have seen with cyclohexene also, cyclohexene when is treated with this condition and we have seen the iodoazide formation at 45 degree centigrade. Here acyclic olefins can also generate this iodoazide. So, what will be the mechanism here? Most likely sodium pyridate oxidize potassium iodide to iodine and sodium azide to N3 dot N3 radical and these two bind to generate the IN3 iodoazide and iodoazide then adds to the styrene and this is regio selectively. So, regio selectively it adds uh, so that the benzylic radical is formed. So, this is benzylic radical and benzylic radical is stable. So, azide attacks to the terminal carbon and now this benzylic ad, uh, radical reacts with I2 to generate the iodoazide. So, beta iodoazide is formed. Also, this is a modification of sodium pyridate oxidation. So, this is a mixture of sodium pyridate and potassium permanganate in aqueous organic solvent used for oxidative cleavage of double bond. So, here uh, the double bond is cleaved to the carboxylic acid. So, most likely the double bond is going to diol and diol is cleaved. So, because potassium permanganate, potassium permanganate will make the diol and the diol cleaved with sodium pyridate to uh, carbonyl compounds and now if there is a hydrogen is there, then this aldehyde with KMnO4 getting oxidized to the carboxylic acid. So, that is what is happening here. This is a this purpose actually diol formation cleavage followed by oxidation when you treat sodium pyridate potassium permanganate together with in acetone water condition. So, today we have seen four oxidizing agent first one was TPAP tetra n copyl pyruthenate this is mild oxidizing agent we have seen and the steric is important we have seen that uh, sterically less hindered alcohol is getting oxidized mainly the primary alcohol goes to the aldehyde. However, when water is present that that time alcohols can also give carboxylic acid. Now, sodium pyridate uh, then we discuss desmartin pyridine, desmartin pyridine is a mild oxidizing agent and it mainly oxidizes alcohol to carbonyl compound, primary alcohol to aldehyde and secondary alcohol to ketone and this is slightly acidic, but uh, it can be made neutral with sodium bicarbonate or pyridine and this is also very selective without disturbing other ether groups. This uh, uh, primary alcohol or secondary alcohol can be oxidized without disturbing THP or ketal or acetal motifs even silyl ethers can also be untouched during this oxidation. Then we discuss open air oxidation, this is opposite of MVP oxidation and here generally acetone is the hydride acceptor and compared to other oxidation mechanism, this mechanism is defined here the age uh, of the OH alcohol is going as a hydride and that hydride is taken by a carbonyl compound mostly acetone also you can use cyclohexanone, parabenzoquinone also aldehydes can be used. And in general secondary alcohols are more reactive than primary alcohol, but also we have seen that when sterics is playing a role, if a secondary alcohol is sterically hindered position, then the primary alcohol oxidize and then the lactol is formed and the lactol is going to lactone. And lastly we discuss sodium pyridate, this also can oxidize alcohol to aldehyde, also it cleaves diol to mainly its application in the diol cleavage, diol to carbonyl compounds. And also defined functionalization reaction can be carried out like cyclohexane to iodo 
cyclohexane or cyclohexene also uh, iodoazide species is formed and when toluene derivatives are reacted with sodium pyrrhide uh, sodium azide acetic acid condition then we have seen CH2N3 is formed and benzylic position can be also activated to generate the benzyl bromide species and we have seen uh, the oxidation of here CH3 to carboxylic acid also with sodium pyrrhide lithium bromide condition in acid condition and here generally the ARCH3 is going to ARCH to Br first the benzylic bromide, benzylic bromide is going to benzyl alcohol, benzyl alcohol to benzyl diet follows by the bromo acyl bromide is formed and the acyl bromide on hydrolysis is giving the carboxylic acid and lastly we have seen the iodination of arenes when electron rich arene is used then the para position is getting iodinated and when electron deficient arene is used then the meta position is getting iodinated with sodium pyrrhide potassium iodide condition. And lastly we have seen the mixture of sodium pyrrhide and KMnO4 which is very strong oxidizing agent where olefin is converted to carboxylic acid. So, first diol is formed then diol is cleaved to the aldehyde and the aldehyde is getting oxidized to the carboxylic acid. So, thank you.